we're just beginning to have an awareness of the the reach and the depth and breadth of these grassroots organizations. At least since 2016, when, you know, when we got the result that we got um, with the selection of Donald Trump for president, there was a, a feeling that we have to be this, the agents of our own salvation. And so those organizations were on the ground. They were already doing the work, but I think maybe there was just a heightened sense of urgency about what's at stake and it's not something that was just momentary. It was. It had to be a long-term strategy and long-term engagement. I work at the IBED Project also. Uh, so I actually, I coach underrepresented voices to get their voices out in the world. So I actually do get a chance to interface with a lot of those very activists who are doing the work. Uh, at, being an activist uh, is about relationships, it's relational, and so, you know, there's, there's a prevailing feeling uh, in the Black community, which is not a monolith, but there's a prevailing feeling that the Democrats don't really talk to you until they need something. And so the, I guess the difference is that it's a real relationship between the grassroots organizations and the communities uh, that they serve. And so they just didn't pop up when they needed something. They've been there the entire time and they represent different kind of circles of um, the black and brown lived experience. So you have like the Black Lives Matter movement, you have reproductive justice movement. I think that they they come together when, when there's a, a sense of urgency or when it's really necessary to coalesce around a particular issue or a particular goal. I think we saw or experienced and we definitely are now witnessing the result of uh, these various communities of interest coming together with a singular message, a consistent message that is delivered on the ground, face to face to people from six feet away, <laughs> socially distant or through social media um, in a way that feels real and feels authentic. And so we had um, impact. Activists had to flip and shift and change uh, how they were communicating with people. So they were doing it in a in a responsible way. Um, there still was door knocking involved, but you know, you don't get close to people. Um, a lot of the messaging strategy shifted to the digital space. So the idea, the, the idea of mobilizing around the vote is not brand new. We've been doing this, um, black people, people of color have been doing this for decades on top of decades, on top of decades. Pressing for the right to vote, demanding the right to vote is actually in our DNA.